All right, this one is going to be exciting. I have two coolers right here in front of me. You read the title, Be Quiet, Dark Rock Slim, and the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo Black Edition. For all intents and purposes, it's just a Hyper 212 Evo, although some have claimed a slightly better thermal performance here. There's really not, there's not supposed to be any difference. Uh, so what we're going to do is use this as kind of like our benchmark. This is a 30 or so dollar USD cooler, and that is an insane value. That's why the Hyper 212 Evo is one of the most popular air coolers around. That, and it also is compatible with pretty much any ATX or micro ATX build. Doesn't interfere with your RAM much at all. Uh, and uh, yeah, you again, should follow suit there. The Dark Rock Slim is a new entrant, came out just a few weeks ago, and it follows a very similar footprint. So four copper heat pipes each, each come with a 120 mil fan, both PWM fans. Uh, and uh, this one has a 180 watt TDP rating. This one doesn't really have one on their website, but we can assume it's around 160 uh, watt or so TDP. In my testing, that's what it comes out to, uh, kind of around the Cryorig H7 quad Lumi uh, space. So we're gonna weigh all that in with this video, and I'm going to try to be as fair and unbiased as possible, especially given the price disparity between the two, because I expect this to be a better cooler for the price, but maybe that's not all you should consider if you decide to spend more than this. Maybe the, the sound quality uh, matters more to you than just cooling in general. Although I think in this price point, you're probably more concerned with cooling. So we're gonna weigh all that in this video. Stay tuned. It's easy to look past certain things, but an Activate Windows watermark yeah, not one of those things. Snag a verified OEM Windows 10 key from SCD Key for a little over 10 bucks and enjoy a fully activated OS without the annoying compromises. Use offer code SStudio for an 18% discount on your order. So the first thing I wanna talk about is ease of installation. This is something that you're going to run into no matter what. I mean, unless you have someone else do this for you, you're going to have to deal with the installation processes of either of these coolers. The Hyper 212 Evo uh, uses an older mounting process, an older mounting mechanism, so it's not as refined as a Dark Rock Slim. It took me about two and a half to three minutes to install that cooler, whereas the Dark Rock Slim, it's about a minute and a half. And uh, that is due in part uh, because the Dark Rock Slim uses the same mounting mechanism as the Dark Rock 4 and Dark Rock Pro 4, which we reviewed in this video right here. So I had a slightly unfair advantage there. Uh, but it uses a bracket, basically like a brace over the entire cold plate. Uh, so you only need two screws to secure the cooler to the motherboard. Whereas with this cooler, uh, the bracket requires four screws and you actually have to secure the bracket to the cold plate via screws upside down underneath the cooler. It's kind of a weird installation process. I know I had run into this before when I used to uh, use the Hyper 212 Evo a lot, uh, but it's been a while, so I definitely needed a refresher. All in all, the Dark Rock Slim definitely had the easier um, install process, but I mean, a minute or two isn't really going to make much of a difference, and it certainly doesn't make up for the 30 or so US dollar disparity between these coolers. Remember that both of these coolers do ship with a four pin PWM 120mm fan. The Silent Wings 3 fan in Be Quiet's case is a definitely, uh, I think, the better looking fan. It is certainly quieter. You'll see our sound test here soon. Uh, but uh, the fact that the Hyper 212 Evo Black Edition does include a four pin uh, fan is still a nice addition, especially in the $30 price range. A few physical aspects of the coolers to point out, both of them utilize four copper heat pipes. I believe they are six millimeters in diameter each. I'm trying to see on the box here if it says that. I'll have to look it up online if not. It just says four heat pipes. Okay, well that doesn't help much. Yes, that would be six millimeters, so I confirm that with the Cooler Master Cooler and the Dark Rock Slim also has six millimeter copper heat pipes. And uh, remember, there are four for both, so pretty much apples to apples here. I mean, this is you're not really gonna get much closer than this, especially when you're crossing over between companies. I used Ida64 Engineer and stressed the CPU as well as the graphics card and system RAM. Uh, so the graphics card would, in theory, heat up the CPU just a bit more because that heat is gonna passively rise into the CPU cooler. You can find the remainder of the parts used in our test bench linked down below if you are interested in building something similar. They're tied to our Amazon affiliate account, so it does give us a small kickback. Just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, one more point of distinction is that I use Carbonaut pads from Thermal Grizzly because of the consistency, right? They're easy to remove and reapply. They're reusable. Uh, we've confirmed that in our testing and it should keep our uh, what would be thermal paste application extremely consistent between uh, these runs. And I ran both of these uh, temp tests for each cooler twice to make sure that there was no variance between them. Now onto the good stuff. These are CP synthetic low temperatures measured in Ida64 after a 20 minute burn-in. And you can see that 
that the Hyper 212 Evo Black Edition came in at about 86 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's the max the peak temperature experienced during that 20 degree run. The average temperature was 77.1. And coincidentally, the Dark Rock Slim came in at the exact same 86 degrees even. There was no variance there. Uh, and then 76.9 degrees on average over the 20 minutes. And that's within the margin of error of that 77.1 from the 212 Evo. So uh, from my testing at least, these coolers are nearly identical and I'm kind of not surprised because they look nearly identical. And if we assume that the fans are turning at around the same RPM, which we're using normal fan curves, so it will vary slightly uh, out of the box, but these fans are meant to run at different RPMs stock. Um, that would explain the, the small variance if there was any, uh, but in this case, they're pretty much the same. Another important aspect of a CP cooler is how loud it operates, and this can be measured in decibels, perceived sound intensity. Remember we're using the logarithmic scale here. Uh, so the Hyper 212 Evo uh, at idle conditions was 27 decibels, uh, 26.1 for the Dark Rock Slim, up to 42.7 for the 212 uh, under load, and 41.2 for the Dark Rock Slim. So uh, the Dark Rock Slim was definitely the quieter cooler. I could perceive the difference. It wasn't substantial, uh, but it is noticeable, and this is going to be, you know, almost totally due to the fact that the Silent Link 3 fan is in the Dark Rock Slim. This is a very premium fan. Uh, now the Cooler Master fan was good. I was actually surprised by how well it handled noise, but well, you know, when the, the temperatures heat up and and uh, the, the fan has to spool up a bit more to accommodate, it, it did get noticeably louder and it was a higher tone. The Silent Wings 3 fans have very low tones and they're a little harder for most people to hear, I think. So uh, that also plays a role uh, and probably is why it seemed even louder than what the uh, decibel reading suggests. So there's that. <laughs> the coolers are exactly the same. The only key differences between the two are that this one is slightly more difficult to install and this one is I don't, I don't think saying slightly quieter does it justice. It is noticeably quieter, um, but is it $30 quieter? I really don't think so. I have to be, I have to be honest with you. Um, I think if this came down in price by about 10 bucks, if it was around $50, that would be more competitive. Uh, as of right now, this is competing in the $50, $60 market with like the H7 Quad Lumi, maybe something a little bigger, beefier than that. Uh, and so it's trying to punch above its weight class, uh, but it, especially with its price, but it, it just, it's, it's not there. I mean, you'd have to really get this fan to ramp up, at which point the whole purpose of this cooler, using a Silent Wings 3 fan to be quiet, is kind of out the window. Uh, so my take on it is that the Hyper 212 Evo is by far the better value. Uh, this is going to be more premium. They both weigh about the same, at least that's what it feels like in the hand. Um, this one is quieter, easier to install, but at the end of the day, you're only installing it usually one time. So I don't really think that's a a worthy point of discernment in the long run. Uh, so if you're interested in saving a few bucks, the Hyper 212 Evo really does impress me. And this one looks really good for the $30 or so price tag, maybe a little more, maybe 35 bucks. Um, if it's upwards of $40, then I think that that, that point starts to dissipate. Uh, but the Dark Rock Slim, it, it's 180 watt TDP cooler but it's, it's really performing like a Hyper 212 Evo. Uh, so it, it needs something more than just beauty and, and being a little quieter uh, to justify its price in my opinion. So maybe in the near future it comes down maybe 10 bucks or so, then I think I could be totally on board with it. It's still a great cooler. Um, would I recommend it to most people? I, it's tough. I mean, if, you, if you're a real big, real big fan of Be Quiet components, then I think this is something you're already considering or already own. Uh, but for the general, you know, purpose of like buying an aftermarket cooler so you don't have to use the stock Intel or AMD cooler, which is usually what people buy this for, I think this is the better buy. Um, full disclosure, uh, we'll be advertising this cooler with Be Quiet here soon, so you'll see a few ads from them with this. And we're actually going to be using this cooler uh, for the remainder of 2019 in our case test. Uh, so you'll be seeing a lot more of this cooler in the future. I just want to let you guys know we do plan to advertise this um, And I'm not going to hide the fact that I don't think it's as good a value as a 212 Evo I think and we've we've advertised products that we don't think are the best but that are still good and that's what this is It's good. It's just not the best especially from a value perspective It's still be quite cooler silent wings 3 some of the best fans on the market in my opinion looks really good Installation is easy just a little pricey at the moment So maybe that will come down soon with that if you guys like this video Let me know against one a thumbs up. I appreciate it it. You guys have been awesome. Click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Become a member if you're feeling especially fancy and I will catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching and thanks for learning with us.
Thank you.